Hi there, and welcome back to Finding Wendy. I know it's been a long time. I think my last Finding Wendy video was back in April. And in between, uh, I've done lots of horn videos, as you guys have all been watching and enjoying. Uh, so I thought it'd be time to update my diet or my lifestyle situation. Um, just in, just to recap, uh, I had my surgery on uh, March 20th, 2018. I had sleeve surgery, and they, at the same time, they took out my gallbladder. And so now I am two years, seven months out from my sleeve surgery. My highest weight was 450 pounds, and um, my lowest weight was 222, and that was back in April, and today I weigh 232, so I've gained 10 pounds in seven months, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, yeah, six months, six months, so not bad. Of course, I've uh, heard lots of um, other bariatric patients that are struggling with weight gain with the COVID times, with being laid off, with the stress, with the depression, and everything that comes with this whole COVID error that we're all experiencing. It is extremely tough for bariatric patients, but it's extremely tough for anybody. I mean, there's lots of people that have gained weight during COVID. There are lots of people that have been drinking and consuming too much alcohol or too many drugs. It's tough. It's really tough. So, um, yeah. So, anyways, I thought I'd just uh, do a Finding Wendy video because I know uh, I've been uh, in hiatus for a long time. I'm still, um, you know, struggling but still trying to keep on track with making sure that I don't have uh, too big of a weight gain. Because it is sure as heck really easy to gain weight now, two and a half years out. Um yeah, last year, as you all know, I had my uh, hip replacement surgery last September, and then I had to have it done three times because I get a, get, ended up getting infected. So I was in and out of the hospital for about two months, having three surgeries on my hip to uh, combat the infection. But that's okay now. Um, and the big NSV right now is that for the last two weeks, I have been walking without my cane. So it's taken almost a year for it to finally heal and um so i'm walking without the cane i'm doing about six to eight thousand steps a day so between six thousand eight thousand steps a day i've been riding my bike a lot in the summer and that's really good but i've steered clear of the gyms i don't feel comfortable with going to the gym and even this week our um, premier of Ontario uh, has shut down gyms, shut down indoor eating in restaurants because we have the second wave and we've gone from two cases a, a day to a thousand cases a day. So this is not good news. Let's take a sip of coffee here. So what is the newest with Wendy? What 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 have I been up to? So. Um, I was working for the Canadian Opera Company remotely since March, and in uh, June, the end of June, the Canadian Opera Company laid me off, laid off the entire um, team of fundraisers at the Canadian Opera Company, so we're, I was done. So I started to collect from our Canadian CERB, um, which is a emergency, um, Canadian Emergency Response Benefit. CERB and it's two thousand dollars a month that you get from the Canadian government if you are laid off so that I was starting to collect so I decided to um, to leave the city and go on a mini vacation which turned out to be a maxi vacation uh, just down the road in Kingston my friend has a beautiful house very close to the lake and uh, she's a horn player, Kathy, and we're great friends. And so I ended up staying in print that area of Kingston in Prince Edward County for a month. So the month of July, I was there and we were playing duets and we ended up playing a concert in Picton, which was fantastic. Uh, some great NSVs. I actually went kayaking. So here's a picture of me in the kayak. I took uh, my dog, Lucy, and my friend Kathy, we went kayaking all over the Kingston area on Lake Ontario, and that was a fantastic experience. And 
fantastic that I can get in and out of the boat, in and out of the kayak easily, and it was a lot of fun. And um, I did a lot of biking. I biked from her house to Kingston, which was a huge NSV for me. And uh, it was a very hot day. It was like 32 or 33 degrees, but I did it. And um, yeah, just trying to keep active. And it was certainly nice to get away from the, the concrete metop metropolis here of Toronto, a city of 5 million people. It's a busy place. And uh, lots of concrete, lots of apartments downtown here. And so it was nice to get into into the nature and uh, this house uh, that my friend Kathy has is basically a like a cottage and it's very it's a two-minute walk to the lake uh, to the beach and uh, had a great time and we played duets and we uh, we just you know just relax we ate really healthy things uh, she she's a great um, she does a lot of gardening and she grows her own vegetables and we had this uh, wonderful salad that I've never tried before that she had made a watermelon salad with feta cheese which was delicious I, I love it but um, yeah so um, when I got back to Toronto um, of course I've been uh, uh, sending out resumes like crazy through LinkedIn and all the other online places that post jobs and I found this and I applied for this job with this local ballet school it's called the Pia Bauman School for Ballet and Creative Movement and it, they were looking for an administrative manager and I got the job so I uh, am so happy that I have a job and I got a job during COVID and um, I'm really enjoying it I ended up leasing the cars because I need a car to get to work and I, I um, sold my van back in March, so I needed to get a car. So I organized a dog sitter between my sister and my niece. Uh, they take care of Lucy. And I work 9 to 5 for the first time in my entire life. I have a 9 to 5 job because as a musician, you don't work 9 to 5. You work at night, you have rehearsals, you have concerts. Uh, certainly don't have a 9 to 5 job uh, lifestyle. So yeah, every day I get up at... Um, at 6.30 and I have a coffee and my breakfast is usually a small container of yogurt and I make my own lunch and I bring my lunch with me to work and for lunch usually I have um, some hummus with some crackers and some cut up cucumber and then I have like a, a handful of grapes and I bring two cookies with me uh, to have with my coffee in the morning when I get there to work. So it's fantastic working for this ballet company. Really enjoy being around these really creative kids um, who are enjoying the very disciplined life of becoming a ballet dancer. And it's, it's a whole new world for me uh, because it's interesting coming from a disciplined musician's uh, background uh, but there is a great similarity with becoming a disciplined ballet dancer that you have the same exercises that you have to do over and over and over and you have a f fantastic team of teachers that are teaching you these particular exercises so that you can end up doing point um, uh, without the bar, B-A-R-R-E. Um, yeah, so and then right now we're working towards our annual Nutcracker performance so they do a fully staged uh, production of Nutcracker and this year it's going to be live streamed so there's going to be no audience and it's all going to be live on the internet so that the parents of the kids can all watch their the parents and family and friends can all watch the Nutcracker performance on uh, their smart devices on their computers or wherever so we're you know joining the virtual world because there's so many um, performing arts uh, organizations around the world that are now embracing online technology and doing live concerts online and uh, so that's what we're going to do as well and um, so as long as the government doesn't shut down the schools because our schools are still open the schools have reopened so to speak at the beginning of September so long as the schools stay open we can stay open and our kids uh, our students practice social distancing they're all six feet apart they all wear a mask uh, during their classes and they uh, the teachers wear a mask and uh, they do we do uh, hand sanitizing when they walk into the studio we take their temperatures so it's all completely within the covid policy and protection 
And up uh, to now, fingers crossed, we've had no uh, issues with anybody uh, getting infected. Yeah, so um, I'm just um, just trying to stay on track. It is sure as heck easy to gain weight after two and a half years. Your old habits um, do creep back into your life. The late night snacking creeped back in my life basically around June, and I was starting to eat like half a bag of smart food at night when I was watching TV. And so I sort of nipped that in the butt and stopped eating the smart food and changed that up with gum. So I chew a lot of gum to help me with that feeling that I need to snack. And I still eat chocolate, so I have um, these little chocolates that I, uh, that I get for as my treat at night after dinner with a cup of, with a cup of tea and um, to get my chocolate fix. Uh, because if I buy a full bar of chocolate, I will eat the entire bar of chocolate. So that's why I got these little chocolates, because I eat that chocolate and then I'm done. And I've had my chocolate fix, and uh, I'm not going to uh, add an extra six or eight or a thousand calories by eating a giant chocolate bar. And I just ruined my entire day of watching that I don't go over the 1,200 to 1,500 calorie limit per day. I don't track my food on my app anymore. I stopped doing that for at least a half a year, but I am making sure uh, that I stay on track and don't get any higher than where I am now. Of course, at first, when I started this journey, I wanted to be able to reach Wonderland, but it's not, it's not a reality anymore. I'm just really happy with the weight I am now, two and a half years out or two years, seven months out. And, um, oh, I recently had a two and a half year follow up with my nurse practitioner at Toronto Western Hospital and we did it over the phone. And uh, I'd had my blood work done and my, my, um, my blood is fine. All the right, right vitamin, you know, nothing, there's no deficiency anywhere. So that's good. My blood pressure is fine. I sleep well. So I'm happy with my life right now. And then just these last two weeks that I stopped having to use a cane and I'm strengthening, my walking's getting better. As I mentioned, I walk between six and 8,000 steps a day. I wanna to get to 10,000, but we'll see, we, we can do that. So anyways, I thought I'd just update everybody, just um, you know, stay the course and uh, don't give up hope, and uh, hopefully uh, this, uh, they'll find a, find a vaccine for COVID soon. I think they're probably on the cusp of finding the vaccine, and we'll all run out fast to get the vaccine and hopefully get back to our normal lives. So I just wanted to uh, reach out to everybody and let them know, let you guys know I'm still here, I'm still fighting, I'm still trying to stay on track with um, no huge regains, and uh, but enjoying life and uh, working hard. So we'll talk to you next time. I'll try and do another update maybe a month from now. But I just wanted to wish everybody here in Canada a happy Thanksgiving. It's Thanksgiving here in Canada. Uh, today, Monday, the uh, October 12th, and um, um, hopefully next time I do an update, we'll have the, uh, the world will have a new president. <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyways, I'm not going to get into any kind of political talk. I know that's a hot, a hot issue for a lot of people, so um, let's just uh, hope for a positive future, and uh, we'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.